Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick at stridewise.com. Today I am going to be reviewing the pretty handsome but pretty cheap boot from Thargood, the 1892 Dodgeville. So Thargood Work Boots is owned by the Weinbrenner Shoe Company and was founded all the way back in 1892 and is currently headquartered in Merrill, Wisconsin. It's employee owned, which is kind of an interesting aspect of the company. And many of their boots are made in America. Not all of them, it's actually 65% of their boots are made in the United States, but the Dodgeville boot is one of them. Now, Thargood is probably better known for their mock toe boots, but this here is the Dodgeville and I'll just say it, this is meant to compete with Red Wings Iron Ranger, which looks like this. They are very, very similar boots. This one is darker because I've been conditioning it with some oil for the last couple of years. This is a lot newer, but they have a lot in common, as you can see. They both have that toe cap. They both have a Goodyear welt around the bottom. But I gotta say, the 1892 Dodgeville boot has got a few tricks up its sleeve. So upon first looking at this boot, the first thing I thought of was, of course, the Iron Ranger. But one of the big differences between the Iron Ranger and this boot is that this is made from Chromexcel leather, which a lot of people are going to be really happy about. Chromexcel is a very beloved leather from Halloween Leather Company. It's got a ton of oils and waxes in there, and it's really common in higher-end men's boots. You see it in boots that cost $400 a pair. You see it in boots that cost $700 a pair, like Viberg. It's very unusual to see it in boots that cost as little as these do because these are very inexpensive boots, which is one of the big pros of this particular brand. Another thing I want to point out is the leather, combination leather and Vibram sole. I should point out that a lot of people think that this Vibram sole is kind of homely. And it is true that when viewed from the side, it doesn't get that nice, like smooth straight line that you get from like a cork midsole, a cork sole or a leather sole. It's a bit chunky, it's a little bit like a commando sole, so that's worth pointing out. Some people like it, some people don't. And the main thing that also uh, jumped out at me about these boots is that after wearing these for a little while, uh, I did definitely come across a lot of quality control issues. I got loose threads here and here and some here and here. And there's also one here and up here. There's a lot of loose threads on these boots. They're not crazy, crazy high quality. I do want to point that out. But for the price that you're paying for these boots, a lot of people expect little things like that. All right, so this is Chrome XL leather. This is called a combination tanned leather and it comes from Halloween Leather Company in Chicago. It is a very beloved and famous leather. It's used in a ton of high quality boots. A lot of people are gonna be happy about that. It has a very rich history. It was used on engine seals and tanks in World War II. And the way it's made takes like 28 working days. It has 89 separate processes. Uh, part of the processing is called hot stuffing when they just jam a bunch of different oils and waxes in here. There's beeswax, there's beef tallow, there's a bunch of other stuff. And it results in this really nice depth of color. These look really good in the sunlight. I was a big fan of it. One thing I do really want to point out though, the back of the leather here went dark. This whole piece here went dark after wearing it for just about a week. And I just have no idea why. I couldn't figure it out. I thought maybe it was supposed to do that. Like they deliberately chose a bit of leather that was more susceptible to darkening because it didn't look like this when I first got it. But check out the other boot I got. It didn't happen to that one. So I just don't know what happened here. I guess they just don't have the most rigorous uh, leather selection policy over at Thargood. Now, uh, to be fair, that isn't that surprising for the cost, but yeah, it was, it was pretty confusing. Now, when it comes to taking care of this leather, the first thing you want to do is get a horsehair brush. There are a few reasons for that. The main reason is that when you are brushing up a leather like Chrome XL, if you brush quite vigorously, that can help to heat up the leather and that can help to move the oils and waxes around, which can help to remove like scuffs and scrapes and things like that. So it is worth investing in a horsehair brush, in my opinion. When it comes to conditioning the leather itself, the Chrome XL is a very, very popular leather. So there are so many companies that use it and they all have different ideas about like the best way to take care of the leather. They all like to have their own products to use. If you talk to Halloween themselves, which I have done, they're very happy with you just using Venetian Shoe Cream, which is a super, super popular leather conditioner, which goes on just about everything. It does a pretty good job of preserving the color. And yeah, it's just great at moisturizing the leather, keeping it supple, keeping it waterproof. They do say that it is a pretty waterproof leather and it, it helps to repel the elements and things like that. If you want a shinier boot, you can also use Saphir's Renovator. That's another product that helps to keep the boot a bit more shiny than Venetian Shoe Cream. So you have those two options, but outside of that, that's really all you need to use. Chrome XL is a pretty hard wearing leather. And again, you should probably avoid using waterproofing waxes or sprays because that can suffocate the leather a bit. So just stick to Venetian Shoe Cream, I think, and you'll be fine. 
So this is what you might call a combination sole. It's leather and cork, and you've got a Vibram lug on top of it. The Vibram is a really high quality Italian rubber. It's really good in slippery conditions, and it's pretty good at absorbing shock as well. The downside is it doesn't look fantastic. I've heard people call this shoe homely before, especially because when viewed from the side in particular, you can see the chunkiness, especially because it contrasts with the cork pretty noticeably. But you can easily replace the sole if you hate it because this is a Goodyear welted shoe. You can see the stitching on the outside of the sole here. I prefer it when the stitching is recessed because it's less likely to be damaged. As you can see, it's worn through a little bit in certain places. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, it's still a pretty good quality sole. Goodyear welts are really easy to resole, and they also improve water resistance, especially because this is a 360 degree Goodyear welt that goes all the way around the outside. So yeah, that sole is definitely a pro. So when it's time to pick your size, uh, personally, I'm between an 11 and a half and a 12 on a Brannock device, and uh, I'm a size 11 in like most of my boots. Boots tend to run large, so I'm a size 11 in Red Wing and Wolverine and Thursday, and I'm a size 11 in these thorough goods as well. So I'm 11D, which is the normal width, and I couldn't find any other widths available anywhere where you can buy these boots. So that's gonna be a real bummer for folks who have like extra wide or extra narrow feet. You can always experiment with just getting slightly larger or slightly smaller sizes. That works for some folks, but yeah, that is a bit of a bummer for people with unusual widths. But it was fine for me. This is the number 60 last, and uh, it fit me pretty well. You know, it wasn't too roomy, it wasn't too narrow, and uh, it was very comfortable out of the box as well. That was a big bonus when compared to the Iron Ranges, which are just kind of a nightmare to break in. I got blisters for like a whole week. These were these are really good to go, so I didn't have any issues with that at all. There is the flip side of that, which a lot of people say, where if boots are very comfortable out of the box, then they're probably not going to last as long as boots that are uncomfortable out of the box. I can't attest to that. I haven't had these for many, many years. But it is true that after a short amount of time wearing these, I got just a crazy amount of loose threads all over the place. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if these aren't the longest lasting boots that I own. So as far as the price goes, these boots are $270, which is considerably cheaper than the Red Wing Iron Ranges I'm constantly comparing them to. But 270 bucks, that's a pretty good price, especially for Chrome XL boots. They're a little bit hard to get online. Thoroughgood has two websites for some reason. Both of them are just absolute dumpster fires. They're really hard to navigate and find anything on them. I managed to find them on one of them, but it just tells you which stores to go to to buy them in person. They don't sell them online. So it's, it's a pretty frustrating process trying to buy these. I recommend going to zappers.com. They have them for the $270. They just have them in black and brown. There is a lighter color out there called Cognac, which is available on Garmin Tori for a little bit more money, but they don't have black and brown, whereas Zappos doesn't have the Cognac. So it just kind of depends on what you're after. But yeah, I think Zappos is probably the best place to get them right now anyway. I really need to emphasize that any and all of this could change at any second because it's the internet. I got mine on Zappos anyway. And I really want to emphasize, yeah, this is a very inexpensive boot. It's about the same amount of money that you would pay for the similar service boots from Chippewa. And in my opinion, this is much better quality. All right, so why should you get a pair of Dodgeville boots? Uh, it is a real treat to have boots that cost under $300 that are made with Chrome XL leather. It's very unusual and I just love the way it looks. This is nice looking leather. When I walk around New York City, when the sun hits it just right, I mean, it's Chrome XL. It looks great. It has a really good depth of color. I was a big fan of that. The sole is nice. This is a, uh, the welting is a Goodyear welt, which is uh, really good for water resistance. It makes it easy to replace the sole. It's also a 360 degree Goodyear welt, whereas like the Iron Ranger is a 270 degree welt. So this is a tiny bit more water resistant. And because it's a Goodyear welt, you can replace the sole whenever you want. In case you don't like this Vibram sole, if you like this chunkiness from the side, you can always just get rid of it. But the Vibram sole is also a big pro for this boot. Vibram is like a really good quality sole. It's super functional, it's super slip resistant, pretty decent shock absorption as well. So I was a fan of that. And it's got a good amount of heft to it as well. This boot is like, it's reasonably heavy. It's not like a Viberg, which is like, you know, two pounds heavy, but it does have a good amount of weight to it for a boot this inexpensive. And the cost is the last pro I wanted to mention. This is a very inexpensive boot. It's not the cheapest boot in the entire world, but I think it's pretty underrated for the amount of money you pay. Personally, uh, these worked out better for me than the Wolverine 1000 miles, which are $100 more expensive. So yeah, underrated boot. There are a few downsides with this boot. First and foremost, the leather here went dark. Like, I don't know what happened. I can only assume that the leather selection is not quite top notch at Thoroughgood. I do want to point that out. I mentioned that earlier, but I wanted to emphasize that. It's just a very confusing part of this boot. Uh, they only have one width available. That's definitely going to be a bummer for anyone with an E, double E, triple E, B, or C width shoe. Um, another thing is that 
As I mentioned earlier, the sole doesn't look quite as classic from this side. It is a little bit, uh, a bit luggy, a bit commando-y. It's easy to replace because it's a Goodyear welt, but it is worth emphasizing. Finally, the quality control issues to which I have referred a few times. Yes, there are tons and tons of loose threads. Yes, I can just get nail clippers and snip them off. It's not gonna be a big deal, but it's not just the loose threads, honestly. The toe cap along here, it's very unevenly cut. It looks kind of like someone came along with scissors and just didn't do a great job of it. Overall, you can tell these boots cost under $300. I do think they're better than a lot of other sub $300 brands, but again, they look what they cost. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the 1892 Dodgeville boot from Thoroughgood. The full written view is in the description below, which includes lots of close-up pictures, so you can see what I'm talking about when I'm complaining about the quality control issues that I mentioned. Uh, and make sure you subscribe. I get a bunch more boot reviews coming up.